From the home offices of Ash and Flow, this is Unbillable Hours, a podcast about professional services marketing. Stick around and listen to our insights, tips, and best practices to improve your firm's marketing and even your career. Hey, everyone. It's another episode without guests this time, but Flo and I've got like some guests popping up soon. But before that, we have to say there's been a lot of conversations between the two of us about various topics. They don't quite grind our gears, but these are things that we generally experience, generally things that people talk to us about and ask us questions. So today, I think the whole topic is about like agency yeah work uh, working with agencies briefing them like why do you need them and how can you work with them better <laughs> yeah and actually to be honest it's it does grind my gears that that topic i mean i've <laughs> you and i both have been on both sides right yeah it has an agency side and then i think that is what what gave us this topic right so i don't know maybe how do we start should we should we start by like what's the what's the typical issue we you and i come across what do, do you have one particular one or should, should i start I'd, I'd like to what's the what's the challenge with working in it with agencies let, let, let's start with how this whole thing gets involved like generally regardless of where i worked in-house most of the times it's like oh okay you guys don't have enough bandwidth you don't have enough staff i think let's just hand this work off to an agency yeah. that's how it all begins some leader somewhere yeah. says you don't have enough bandwidth you don't have enough you know a capability bring an agency or sometimes they'll be like oh there's some strategic uh, thinking involved here and you don't have enough time to do yeah, that no kind one of has thinking. Time for that either so, <laughs> so, yeah. so bring in an agency and on the client side what you need to do when you speak to an agency is that realize that they're not the solution for everything yeah, they're just a exactly. catalyst to help you resolve some internal yes, issue that I, you need to face externally or internally. I, I agree 100 percent with that because because coming back to your first point, that's exactly what I'm seeing also and have seen a lot, and I mm -hmm. see it again lots of places. Yeah. So I'm going to make up a statistic and say in eight out of ten cases, that would be my guess. Eight out of ten times, the agency is brought in exactly like you said. They're almost like a, a savior hire, right? Yeah. Uh, marketing team is overwhelmed, doesn't have time. The business overwhelmed, doesn't have time. Bring in the agency to help us do X. And which in my view is a recipe, not for disaster, because there's plenty of good agencies who be able to still cope and guide you through that. But it is a recipe for suboptimal sort of project setup and, and delivery. Why? Because you, like you said, there an agency is a great catalyst for if you have a strategy that that works, you have proven that out to some point. If you have messaging that seems to resonate because you've proven that out to a certain point, they can take that and run with it and they can take your your inputs or the building blocks you have given them and get creative around those and then really drive impact and build awareness and build demand and these types of things at scale. Like that's literally, I think what being a creative in business does is he takes good inputs and then creates creative ideas around those, which which is my way of saying, if you hire the agency before you have made up these building blocks and you have nailed these essentials, you know, you're just gonna, chances are you're gonna waste everybody's time and money. That's just my, and, my point. Yeah, and, and professional services companies technically do not even have an excuse here because what you do as a professional services firm is to help your clients <clears throat> on their journeys, on their transformation, on whatever the big project is. So you're essentially catalyzing change for them. And if you're hiring an agency to catalyze you, you, you should be expecting them to catalyze your marketing effort, not for them to do your work, because guess what? They're not able to do your work because they're an outsider. Yeah. Bring and them in as your friend, your cohort. That should, that should be the attitude. Yeah. And, and I mean, to, to be very clear and specific because you mentioned that there's no perfect brief, but I think we can give people a few pointers for how to at least make a, make a decent one. Mm -hmm. And I think what you touched upon there is just, that's just step one. Like you have to, it's your, the in-house marketer's job to wrestle with the business, to come up with a clear description of, okay, this is the business context, right? This is the, I mean, the amount of times I have discussions, even to agree 
what is the basic scope here? And I think there's just two. I, I don't know if you agree. You can hire an agency to drive a campaign either to to create awareness and demand, right? This is where we, as a firm, educate the marketplace about an issue they might be unaware of or a new solution we've developed, right? Uh, the other one is just demand capture. This is where we, we step into a space which is very well known. People already know that there is that's a problem. There are solutions to it. And we just want to compete for some of the work which is handed out. Like that's a typical situation uh, mm -hmm. a tax advisory firm might find themselves in, right? Businesses yep. know they need tax advisory. It's a known problem. They know there's a bunch of firms out there. So how can we sort of elbow in there and make sure we get a share of the work? So, these are, so be clear about the business context. Be clear about that. And then... So, I do want to just add that yeah. I know that tax advisory seems to be the new automotive for you, but carry on. Oh, that, no, sorry. I, that, they're my fallback example for, I have a lot of respect for that niche mm -hmm. because that's a must buy. Like you cannot, most yeah. companies can't go without it. So yeah. the situation there, and it's not, oh, we've come up, we found some new problem, we found, defined a fancy solution. No, no, it's very yeah. regulated. It's blah, blah, yeah. and how, it is, so it is. It is. Uh, I hate to say this, but it is very much a commodity service. So competing in that mm -hmm. space is different from anyone else. That's why I picked But up. yes, uh, yeah, no, absolutely go long. on. Yeah, absolutely go on to the fact that we need to like, when it comes to like a strong briefing, right? I think the way the marketer needs to approach it is like, what are you looking for when you're hiring someone to support you? So rather than, what are you looking for when you're hiring someone to solve a problem for you? Yeah. The, the, these like you need to go in with that mindset to set the right context, objective, and scope. Yeah. Because without that, what you're essentially doing is, right? I need to resolve all this. I'm going to just dump it to the agency, and yeah. you're not going to get get anywhere. Yeah, and that's that's perfect metaphor. Because what do I have to do in order to be able to define what I need someone to support me? I have to have gone through the stuff myself and done mm -hmm. it myself, which by the way, that is my short answer to when should you hire an agency answer. If you have done a rudimentary version of what you want them to do yourself. Like I literally had the conversation with a client last week where they thought like, oh, we need two, two new services. We need two landing pages. Sh should we get an agency to do it? And to which I said, no, no, your in-house team should build the landing page and you let it run for two weeks. So you know, you know, which parts of it are working, which parts are shitty. And then you turn to an agency and, and tell them, here's what we've done. It's sort of okay-ish in a bad way. Help it, help us make it two times, three times better, right? Yeah, I, I'll kind of like build it to a more neutral spot. Build a mock-up. Have your mock-up ready. Have your demo ready. Don't have your final product. Like maybe you don't have the expertise in-house to build this entire page. But get your mock-up in terms of what you're doing. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. fine. But then the mock-up should the be okay. I'll give you that. But bare minimum, once you have mm -hmm. mocked it up, a couple of clients should have seen it. Yes, because yes. that's the, the the difference is if you need something that has at least been tested out to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. and so you because then the creatives get some date some actual data on what resonates, what doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. And they can help you remove the things which don't because that's what you know. That's what creatives do. You show them, like, look, this here doesn't work. The click-through rate is shit. The message is, I don't know. And they'll come up with much better ideas for you because that's that's what they're good at. If you just yeah. give them a mock-up based on assumptions you've made, you can steer them in completely wrong directions. And that's what I see happen quite often. Insight-based mock-up and the collaborative process. The, the, that's oh, what you the can business do. told yeah. us the clients wants this and that. The business didn't know. So you, yeah. the marketer, didn't know. So you told the agency something they also didn't know. And you run off and build an 80 grand project that doesn't deliver any of the results because no one down the line tested the assumptions anywhere. So there that's is your another, job. That's, that's yeah. your fault. Sorry. You got to yeah. catch that. And there is another way to do this as well. Do it with an agency that's done the exact same job for a competitor or within the same thing because they, the, they have the market insight for you pre-prepared that what you need to do is build in your specific insight so that way you kind of can do it right. Yeah, but if you hire a regular you know, agency that doesn't have that background or experience, you're kind of you know, messing around, yeah. really. But which, which by the way, that, that is a, that's also a good benchmark for agency quality is if they don't bring their own analysis, yeah. even, if, even if you tell them, right? And mm -hmm. we all had these clients to come and say, here's our research, just this, you have everything, now just go execute. Even then, as an agency, you should push back and say, okay, we're going to review this and we'll let you know what we think. 
Um, mm -hmm. If you have an agency that doesn't do that, uh, find another one because, you know, there's never like, that's another service or value they add is the outside perspective. And if you don't allow them to do it, that's one mistake. If if they are not offering it, you have the wrong agency. But that's sorry, that's tangential. But your your point is well made is we have to give them our our business context, we have to give them our sort of strategic guidelines, and we have to give them our insights into the process, which hopefully either we've built a mock up and showed it to a couple of clients, we've done our own versions of a crappy campaign, whatever it is, I don't know what you're after. Um, but but yeah, you can't I'll... just give them a, a check and a blank slate and tell them, please come back within four weeks, you know. And, and here's something. Because when, I don't want to spend it. the time. That That's, that's yeah. a problem. Yeah. When you talked about it, uh, it, and like I mentioned, it's a collaborative process, and it's a process in trust. Trust an agency that literally tells you that they can't do this job because they don't know what it entails because they have not done it before, rather than an agency that says, I can't do this because I have no time. because the agency that is willing to tell you that, you know, blam face truth, that they need that kind of information will be an agency that you can go to if you've got the market insights in the future, because they can build it. The one that says they have no time, you've got literally no idea. And unless they're like a super expert in your specific area, I wouldn't even use them. Yeah. And we have this in our notes here, and you mentioned it because I've mentioned landing pages and all that crap. Even if, yeah, yeah. if you don't go for creative deliverables, but if you go more for the strategic stuff, right? The yeah. same principle is true. You mentioned messaging. Yeah. Um, I see so much messaging, and I've received it myself, where someone based on some anemic inputs from a firm does their best effort ever and writes up messaging, and it's still not close enough to the actual work of the firm and the actual needs of the clients. Why? Because that person from the outside never has the same insight you can have. So, so you have to do at least, let's say, a, sh a shitty version of the messaging. You say, these are the points we need to hit. Like, this is the, per the, the ideal client profile we've built. Over. And they will, they will be able to tell you where it's not good or where you could, it could be refined and so forth. And they should, right? Because they should run their own analysis. But you have to have the first draft, like always for all of these things. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think yeah. it works any other way. As a client, don't give the agency nebulous wording. And as an agency, don't take that nebulous wording. If you, you need specific like yeah. you know, feedback yeah. and you need to give specific input. Otherwise, otherwise you like, otherwise it's the best practice for both groups to just wait until it's, you know, actually yeah. there. Yeah. Which which goes to into your the that's another tangential remark, but that goes into an area you you like a lot, which is the this impetus of agencies always come in and say, oh, you, you got to simplify stuff and you have to take the jargon out, right? And it has to be weekend language, and then they do it, um, and that it's a legitimate concern. And that's it's correct to a point, but as beyond a certain point, like you said, the specific they take out the specificity because yeah. your first GD draft might have some jargony words, which are the exact right words for the audience you're targeting. And then they take it out yeah. and polish and polish and polish it until the end. It says, Oh, our firm does, uh, you know, reduce costs and increase revenue, which is what everybody does. Uh, so there's yeah. no difference there anymore. So yeah, you got to maintain the, the specificity there also. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on that point, basically, when you're, if you're talking about this, I think we are going on a tangent, but while you're doing the strategic kind of work, your client doesn't need the 30,000 view. They need more of a specific view to take to the market. Yeah. And also, on the client side, you can't go to the agency with this 30,000 view because they can't build you that specific message. If you give this generic stuff, you will literally run into the problem that... Uh, a few seasons ago, Beyond mentioned that if you can literally just remove the logo and the tagline and find that the messaging for all these professional services firms is pretty much identical. It doesn't really say anything. Yeah. So g going a bit through the, uh, or pushing, pushing further through the list. So we, we touched upon business context, right? The objectives, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. you, you have to give them the, the, the strategy and the the key points there are obviously the segmentation, the positioning info and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it, again, same principle, give them a shitty first draft. Um, then you should give them the mockups or the whatever insights you had, like you just discussed. And then here my list says, description of your go-to-market process or client's buying journey. I, I think that's also important. No, and that doesn't matter what specific piece of work you give to them. They just have to understand, like once they interact with whatever it is the agency creates, 
how does the journey progress from there, right? And what comes yeah. before it? And that is something I find is very often missing from briefings. <laughs> Side note, <laughs> for often because the firm itself doesn't know exactly, <laughs> right? They say, oh, once they land on the page and then they download the thought leadership and then what? Yeah, crickets, right? Because <laughs> that's not been defined. So make sure, again, you have to design the system like in full to your point, Ash, so that you have a very clear understanding how someone might support you. You can't just delegate it. The agencies will have ideas, but, you know, no one something that's um, a good fit for you. Yeah, I feel like there's an entire episode about how brand marketing is not divorced from actual digital marketing anymore. I feel like there's an episode there that we should get into because... If you're trying to position yourself as something, when oh, people are I looking for you, I when people it. are looking for you, they need to know these right things. It's like, like that's a big problem for a lot of companies. You literally just have these very specific keywords that they I'm, can't I'm, find anything I'm, about I'm, you. I am seriously triggered because all these descriptors <laughs> don't make any sense to me. Like the marketing is just marketing, and digital yeah. marketing is what. Is market? There's no difference. Like, There's yeah. no difference. But people tend <laughs> Same to like principles apply. So, anyway, yeah, but, but people <laughs> but segment they... too much. You know, this, you yeah, know they this. segment that too much so they can have more job titles and stuff like that. But uh, there's another point on, on our list which I think is interesting, Ash, uh, and it's budget, right? Yeah. Um, which, when we were on the agency side, we always crave for, and clients are sort of stingy or secretive about it. Just if you have a budget, just put it. You know, helps everybody do a better job. And then we have expectations around performance. Do you remember around that was? Oh yeah. I Actually, something I do want to add on the performance expectations is that as a client, what would be beneficial if you want to keep engaging with the same agency is to tell them how the work they did performed. Because usually what happens with a lot of clients is that they will hire you for the work and then they will give you literally no feedback other than, that was great. That was crap. Everybody and, loved it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you have no understanding of whether it really worked or not. And then these people will say, hey, you know that thing that you did last time? It really was good. I want you to do it again. And yeah. you have no metric. And and speaking about maybe, like you mentioned, working with agencies in the beginning, right? If, if it's yeah. a longer term relationship, that is what gets people engaged and ambitious to, to keep working with you. If you actually feedback and tell them, guys, your work really helped me do this and that, even if it's, you know, even if some, some, expected results were missed or something yeah. if you can weigh that in a positive manner it's, it's still motivating mm -hmm. to, to to honest professionals they'll they'll try to do better next time like everybody loved it is not something that makes me as a service provider <laughs> wanting to come back and do another project maybe maybe i like you better because it's sympathetic but if if you give me the feeling i actually contributed to something that was quite meaningful that's much better mm -hmm. On the performance stuff, I just, I just, I will just say that is something that I do now and that I advise clients to do when working with them is state the budget and with that, give, if you can, expectation values around certain points, for example, costs, like if, to give you a, a practical example, last week we did a, I worked with a client who hired someone else to drive the recruitment marketing campaign for them. Mm -hmm. And we just laid out the, the KPIs around how much does this firm usually pay to get a CV in? right? What is, okay, what is the industry so benchmark we we got a hold of by accident? And what is the expectation? Well, of course, we would like to stay cost to stay at least on that mark or below that, right? The expectation well, yeah. for an agency who does it better than we do it would be to improve that. So, and if you run, like you can go into LinkedIn's campaign manager, segment the market you want to do, and it'll, it'll show you the expected click-through rates or the expected cost per click or whatever. So you should be very able to say, out of my fifty thousand dollar budget, I want you guys to use ten grand for media, and you know that should give us around that benchmark of impressions. If you do less than that, you know there'll be questions <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and then again, this is not this is not doesn't have to be prescriptive in the sense of you know best and and you're flawless and that's the benchmark they have to hit. But it just gives the agency a chance to to see. You know to manage expectations and they can no, tell you yeah right, dude your numbers are way off and then you'll have learned something or they can say okay fine it seems reasonable understood or they have no comment at all in which case find another agency <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but yeah so i'll find a better working relationship really that's a key yeah. thing there but i do think we really hit the time mark yeah, we're at the, yeah we're at the 20 minute mark so um 
quick summary. I mean, we can put this in the show notes, but I think what, what our list said was strong briefing has business context and objectives, strategy mm -hmm. information, yeah, specifically segmentation, right? Don't be lazy, mm -hmm. do yep. real segmenting. Positioning info, you don't have to have the finalized positioning. The agency can help with that, but, but give yeah. them some information around, you know, in that market segment we're trying to target, where are we in, in comparison to either competitors or next best alternatives. Then details on the offerings, right? What is it you're actually trying to sell? Oh, we forgot that one, but I think that's also clear. And then, I yeah, feel like, like you said, go to market forward. process, yeah. buying journey, budget, expectations, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then we have the last point, guardrails regarding oh, guard do's which I think that's also clear, just if there are certain specifics in terms of language, if there's, I don't know, anything that might inform Don't make the... everything into like simplified baby talk is one yeah. thing. Oh, um, yeah, like, first of all, understand your audience. If your audience is a technical audience that's used to certain terminology, don't talk down to them. If your audience requires an explain like I'm five, don't talk in confusing language. But don't talk in confusing language in general, but don't talk in a way that they can't understand. So make sure that all these points are clear in your, you know, in your approach to the agency in terms of building your messaging and the agency at the same time needs to ask the question, what in what you've provided is important? And yeah. because that's the, uh, you know, relationship of trust you build. Yeah. Very good. So I think that's, that's a wrap on that one. Have a nice weekend, everyone. And then speak soon. See ya. I'm going to stop the recording here. Thanks for listening to Unbillable Hours. If you want more, tune in next week. You know where to find us.